Finding good weapon mods for Fallout 4 on PlayStation 4 is like trying to find people that genuinely believe the Earth is flat. You would be surprised by how many of them actually exist. I managed to find 10 good weapon mods, and they are really impressive considering the limitations of modding on PS4. With that said, let's have a look at them. I'm flying high. Up first at number 10 we have Kaboom Stick by Boulder Blazer. Apologies if I butchered that pronunciation. Kaboom Stick is just an awful name for a weapon mod, but the weapon itself is pretty sweet. You can find it laying up against one of the yellow crates just outside the entrance to Vault 111. It looks really nice with a black and red colour scheme and a rusted look, making it seem old, which it should because it's probably been sat outside the vault for 200 years. It uses shotgun shells as ammo and deals 141 ballistic damage and 5 fire damage, but what makes this shotgun unique is that it shoots multiple fireballs that explode on impact. It has an extremely long range with high accuracy and it even has the VATS legendary effect, improving your VATS hit chance and decreasing its action point cost by 25%. This thing is a blast to use. Get it? Last, cause explosions? <laughs> Honestly, running around shooting super mutants into oblivion with this thing was really fun. My only issue I had with this mod when I first fired it is that I almost went deaf from how ridiculously loud it is. So make sure you turn your volume down if you don't want to give yourself a headache. Behind door number 9, we have Light Sword by Scientist711. This mod is clearly an attempt to bring a lightsaber to Fallout 4, which I 100% approve of, and I was pleasantly surprised by how good this mod actually is, considering the PS4 limitations. A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. You can find this at the studio at Hubris Comics, on the top floor in the editing room on the top of the mixing desk. The blade has high energy damage and ignores most enemy armour, and the weapon range matches the beam length. The only issue this mod has is that the Pip-Boy preview image doesn't work. You can now run around the Commonwealth pretending you're a budget Obi-Wan Kenobi whose lightsaber turned yellow for some reason. My favourite thing about this mod is the sweet sci-fi noise it makes when you draw it, mimicking the sound of a lightsaber, which is made even better by the fact that in the mod description it says, Special thanks to my son for help with the sound effects, which is so wholesome it would have made my heart melt if I had one. You caught my At Garden Gate number 8, we have Lightning Burst, another mod by Boulder Blazer. I really hope I'm saying that right. This weapon mod gives you unlimited power, as it allows you to shoot lightning at your enemies. It can be found on top of one of the yellow wooden crates outside the Vault 111 entrance, just like the Kaboom Stick. The lightning burst uses fusion cells for ammo, and the mod description says that it's a semi-auto firing weapon, but then it also says in brackets next to that, hold fire, and if you just hold down the trigger in game, it continues to fire, so it's not really semi-auto, it's actually fully automatic. It has a long range, very good accuracy, and a high damage of 161. It's also lightweight, with a small and compact design, as well as a reflective black texture that looks really nice, making it feel like something different from the vanilla laser rifles. Due to its low weight, high damage, and awesome lightning rounds, this could make for a very entertaining and effective sidearm. It's certainly worth a download. You caught my eye. At lucky number 7 we have Bioweapons by Noir Black. First off, I should mention that in order to get this mod to work, you first need to download the Player Bunker and Combat Simulator mod by the same mod author. Any wasteland creature that runs into you when you're wielding one of these bioweapons is certainly not lucky whatsoever. The mod description says, This weapons pack contains the latest in biological warfare, harnessing the power of genetically modified creatures and other biological agents, allowing you to turn some of the most dangerous elements of the waste to your advantage. How awesome does that sound? The pack is found just inside the bunker on the shelf immediately left of the doorway. The pack includes the Infector, a weapon that launches genetically modified bloatfly larvae that carry Mylurk embryos which spawn Mylurk hatchlings that attack enemies. This particular gun is insanely fun to use, but be careful because if you spawn too many Mylurk hatchlings it will seriously mess with your FPS. You also get the Face Melter, which is a fantastic name. This weapon harnesses the power of the acidic spit of the Mylurk Queen. It wasn't very powerful for me, but I don't have any of the heavy weapon perks, so that might be why. Nonetheless, it was really fun to spit acid at my enemies whilst Mylurk hatchlings crawled all over them from the Infector. You also get two new grenades, 
the Firefly Grenade, which spawns a swarm of genetically modified Stingwings that swarm around harassing your enemies, and the Outbreak Grenade, which explodes releasing a radioactive virus that turns enemies into glowing feral ghouls. As well as that, you also get the Outbreak Syringe, which is another ammo type for this Syringer that infects targets with the Outbreak Virus, turning them into ghouls. All ammo and grenades are craftable at the chem station under bioweapons. Fortunately, you don't have to worry about creating a swarm of Mylar catchlings that destroy the FPS of a specific location forever, because the creatures will die off eventually. These weapons are amazing, and seeing a bunch of Mylar catchlings running around killing your enemies for you is great. The only reason this mod isn't further down the list is that at higher levels, these weapons are not particularly useful, as they don't do a lot of damage. Although the grenades could be useful at higher levels, it's worth downloading this mod, even just to mess about with it for an hour or so. At number 6 we have the Winter Blade, another mod by Scientist711. As the title of this mod says, this is a PS4 exclusive mod, making it a little bit extra special. You can find the Winter Blade at the Jamaica Plain Town Hall basement in the archive room on top of some filing cabinets. Elsa would love this sword, as it allows you to freeze enemies every time you hit them, which is as overpowered as it sounds. Enemies have no chance to fight back because you can just constantly freeze them over and over, so for 1v1 fights you are pretty much unstoppable, and even if you are up against 2 or 3 enemies, you could just keep switching targets and freezing them before the effect wears off. I think I would prefer if there was an option to change the sword so that it has a percentage chance of freezing, rather than freezing on every hit. Nonetheless, it's great fun to use, freezing your opponents and then chopping their limbs off. At Man Alive, number 5, is John Marston's 44 by Jaleesa. This mod adds a seeking revolver to Fallout 4 that kind of works like Deadeye from Red Dead Redemption, except you can't fire at multiple targets, you can only fire at one enemy at a time. You can find it in Diamond City, on the chemistry station where the Doctor is. The mod author was able to do this by adding the missile seeking effect you can get on missile launchers, but with bullets instead of missiles, effectively rendering VATs useless. Just simply point the gun at the enemy, and the recon will appear above the enemy, which is basically a little red rhombus diamond shaped thing. Shoot the gun, and the bullet will seek out the enemy, even if you're not aiming at them, as long as the recon is on them. There is a unique mod attachment under receivers called Deadeye, this will increase damage and slow down time every time you aim. It slows down time so much that you can recon one enemy, shoot, recon another enemy, shoot, and a third, and a fourth, etc. before the first bullet has even reached your first target. The only downside to this is to stop the slow motion effect. You have to either quick swap to another weapon from your hotkey favourites, enter the pit boy, or enter vats. Or you can use the Deadeye chems added by the mod, craftable at the chem bench, similar to Jet, but time is slowed much more, and it doesn't have any negative effects, so no chance of becoming addicted. They come in a 6, 10, 15, and 30 second duration, they are weightless, and only cost one bottle cap to create. Keep in mind that an enemy might be hiding in or behind something that the bullet cannot reach, so you may hit a wall or an object. The seeking system doesn't understand what objects are and tries to go through them. Another issue is that you can't aim for a particular body part. Say for example you wanted to aim for an enemy's arm so they can't use their gun, or you wanted to aim for a super mutant suicider's left arm so that you blow up the mini nuke they're holding. You can't do that, it's not possible to do that with the seeking effect. The mod also adds a custom chrome skin that you can apply to all 44 revolvers in the game, apart from the custom bladed barrel. Behind door number 4, we have Aliens of the Commonwealth by Ascendant Light. This mod adds some alien action into Fallout 4 by changing the Federal Surveillance Center K21B in the Glowing Sea into an alien base, which is a fun little dungeon to run through, where you will have to fight off hordes of aliens, which will give you a bunch of alien blaster ammo, which you will need for the 6 unique alien blaster pistols that are added by this mod. 5 of the pistols can be found in the End Dungeon chest, which are the Anal Probe Pistol, the Disintegrator Ray Pistol, the Ion Detonator Pistol, the Zapomatic Pistol, and the Zeta's 
Revenge pistol. There is a sixth unique pistol that you can loot from the alien captain called the Captain Sidearm pistol, so make sure you don't miss that. Excellent. The Captain Sidearm is not particularly special. It's pretty much the same as the standard alien blaster pistol. The only difference is the weapon emits a red flare effect after you shoot it, which to be honest is actually quite distracting, so not much to talk about there. Fortunately, the other pistols are a bit more unique and interesting. The anal probe fires circles of radiation similar to the vanilla gamma gun, however it doesn't cause as big of an explosion as the gamma gun does. The disintegrator ray acts like a flamethrower spitting out a constant stream of fire so that you can cook your enemies, which is extremely fun to use and much more powerful than the vanilla flamethrower, as well of course being much lighter. The Ion Detonator is essentially a plasma grenade launcher, which is pretty neat. Just be careful because it doesn't have a very good range, making it very easy to kill yourself with. The Zapomatic is my personal favourite of the six pistols. It shoots out blasts of electricity, similarly to the Lightning Burst, which we looked at earlier in this video, except this shoots much faster and is much more powerful. Then you have the Zeta's Revenge Pistol, which fires an extremely powerful and extremely wide laser blast that makes it very difficult to miss your target. It also seems to be extremely aggressive, as most of the time it just completely tears apart enemies, sending their different limbs flying off in different directions, which is great. And because it has such a wide blast, you can damage multiple enemies with a single shot. I found it to be extremely overpowered, but also extremely satisfying to use. This is a great mod, give it a try. Up at number 3 we have Melee and Throwing by Noir Black. As this is created by the same mod author that created the Bioweapons pack, you will again need to download the Player Bunker and Combat Simulator mod before you can use this one, and you will also need the Far Harbor DLC. The pack can be found just inside the bunker on one of the shelves. These weapons are best used in third person because in some cases the effects only work in third person view, so keep that in mind. The included weapons are the Plasma Blade, which comes in green, blue and red versions. The unique effect allows you to activate a Saber Cloak when sprinting, which turns you invisible and spits out a bunch of plasma juice. You also get the Flame Dancer Spear, a spear that causes you to ignite with flames while in combat, dealing constant damage to the enemies around you. You also get the Thunder Hammer, which is my personal favourite because it's basically Thor's hammer, which allows you to strike with the force of a lightning bolt and sprint to build charge, and then jump to perform Falling Thunder, a special attack that sends lightning down from the sky to damage your enemies. The Hellfire Mace is a battle mace imbued with a Hellfire Blast Generator, and again you can sprint to build up energy and then jump to perform a Hellfire Impact Drop a special attack that causes a fiery explosion on landing. You also get the Frozen Wrath of Grognak, which is Grognak's axe imbued with a cryo effect, and the ability to sprint to generate frost, enabling you to jump and perform a falling avalanche, a special attack that causes an icy explosion on landing. You also get the Storm Claw, which allows you to strike your enemies with the power of the storm, as well as having the ability to sprint to build energy and then jump to perform the falling thunder attack, the same as the thunder hammer. And finally you get throwing knives, which are simple throwing knives that strike enemies stealthily and scales with melee and unarmed perks. These knives are craftable at the chem station. Be aware that there are some known bugs with these knives, such as poor accuracy and they can disable the graphics for the weapon mods. Simply unequip and re-equip to fix that issue. This is an awesome mod that I had a lot of fun with recording gameplay for. I highly recommend downloading it and trying it out. <laughs> Our penultimate mod on this top 10 list is the Wacky Weapons Workshop by Andrew CX. Although this doesn't add any new weapons to the game, it allows you to create your very own custom weapons by mixing and matching all of the existing attachments in the game. You can craft wacky basic weapons of all types at the chemistry station, with no material or perk requirements. You can then take the wacky weapon to a normal weapon workstation and modify it using the same basic system as vanilla weapons, but with more options and no costs or requirements. You can add any vanilla mod type to any wacky weapon, add up to two legendary effects, override the projectile type of guns to change the ammunition used and the visuals fired to any gun, and you can even change the colour of the whole weapon using the PS4 compatible colour swaps. Using this mod I was able to create a submachine gun with a handmade powerful automatic receiver, laser improved automatic barrel, combat recoil compensating stock, submachine gun large quick eject drum mag, gatling laser sight, 
laser quantum gyro compensating lens that shoots missiles, and with the rapid and two-shot legendary effects, creating a automatic firing missile launcher capable of destroying an entire group of raiders in seconds, or myself if I wasn't careful. The mod creates alternate versions of all weapons that are created by the player. No wacky weapons will appear in the game world or on NPCs, and no existing weapons of any sorts are altered. Wacky weapons are completely separate from the normal in-game weapons. This mod is a lot of fun to mess around with and should be in everyone's load order. Finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, at number 1 we have Mage Fists by Noir Black. Noir Black does it again with another fantastic weapon mod that's incredibly impressive considering the limitations of modding on PS4. This weapon pack again requires the Far Harbor DLC and the Player Bunker and Combat Simulator mod. Just like Noir Black's other weapon mod packs, this pack is found just inside the bunker on one of the shelves. This pack is intended to add a mage type playstyle option to the game. All of the casted slash thrown magics scale off explosive perks, whilst the mage fists scale off unarmed perks. You will notice that the mod offer gives you a thousand ammo for each of the casted slash thrown weapons, and that is because their real resource is a AP. If they strike an enemy, they will use up your AP, and you can craft any more of the thrown magics at the chem station, although none of the Pit Boy previews will be available for these weapons. The included weapons are the Bloodstorm Gauntlet, which surrounds your fist in a blood red mist, the Cryo Fist, which freezes your fist, allowing you to throw frozen punches, the Hellfire Fist, which sets your fists on fire, allowing you to burn your enemies, the Plasma Fist, which surrounds your fist with plasma energy, and the Storm Fist, which surrounds your fist with lightning energy. All of the mage fists also grant you the ability to perform elemental nova by holding block, which sends down an elemental blast launching enemies into the sky, and it also allows you to perform elemental blitz by sprinting into enemy targets which sends them flying away from you. The casted or thrown magics include a fireball that detonates on impact and ignites targets, a plasma ball that detonates on impact, blasting your targets away, a lightning bolt that strikes your enemies down, a plasma orb which summons a plasma orb to attack your enemies, a storm orb which summons a storm to attack your enemies, a fire elemental which summons a fire elemental to attack your enemies, and finally the thunderstorm which invokes a thunderstorm over the area in front of you. All in all, this is an extremely innovative weapon pack that is an absolute joy to use and have fun with. I was really surprised that a weapon mod like this could even exist on PS4, so major props to Noir Black for creating such an awesome mod. That will take us to the end of the video. I do hope you enjoyed it or found it useful in some way. If you did, please leave a like, click subscribe and hit the notifications bell button to see more videos like this in the future. Thank you for helping me reach a thousand subscribers. Now let's try and get to 2000. I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe out there in the wasteland. Falling for nobody else